It is now my pleasure to invite Ms. Laura Rosenberger, Chairperson, American Institute in Taiwan, to the podium to give us her remarks. Well, thank you all so much. It's so wonderful to be here with you this evening. Um, Madam President, uh, it's wonderful to see you again. Um, Director Odekirk, um, Chair Vincent Schur, um, esteemed friends and colleagues, good evening. Uh, it really is a pleasure to be here tonight to participate in AmCham's annual Shen Yun Fan celebration and to see so many familiar faces. I look forward to working closely with all of you during my tenure as AIT chair, since I know there is much we can accomplish together. <laughs> I'm grateful for the opportunity to be here speaking with you in Taiwan less than a month after starting in this role. And of course, as President Tsai noted, it was really my privilege that one of my first engagements was to accompany her during her successful transits of New York City and Los Angeles, during which, President Tsai, you met many Taiwanese Americans as you traveled uh, to and from Central America. I think your transits underscored the strength of the partnership between the United States and Taiwan and of the bipartisan support in the United States that underpins it. And while I did... <laughs> and while I did just arrive here in Taiwan late last night, President Tsai and her team have ensured that I have, had, I have been back to back in meetings all day so that I have no, I've had no time to get tired from the jet lag. So thank you very much for that. <laughs> Indeed, our partnership has continued to grow in both breadth and depth, a testament to the ties between our two democracies, our people, our economies, and our shared values. We face many challenges together, but we also have many opportunities. And I hope to work with President Tsai and your team, along with my colleagues at, at AIT, Director Odekirk, and my many capable colleagues here, as well as in the US government, to continue to identify and seize those opportunities. One such opportunity is advancing our work to build partnerships that showcase to the international community all the ways in which Taiwan is a force for good. More people around the world are paying attention to Taiwan than ever before, and this provides a real opportunity to underscore the value proposition that Taiwan provides. The United States has also been working to build partnerships that include Taiwan, and we are expanding cooperation on international development and humanitarian assistance around the world. The United States is also working to promote Taiwan's meaningful participation in international organizations and multi-stakeholder forums like the World Health Assembly and at the International Civilian Aviation Organization. We are also intensely engaged with our international partners and with other countries, helping to increase their understanding of the important role Taiwan plays in the global economy, in the Indo-Pacific, and further afield. We were so pleased that Taiwan could once again participate in the second Summit for Democracy just last month, showcasing the ways in which Taiwan serves as a beacon for democracy in the region and around the world. And in organizations where Taiwan has full membership, the United States continues to support its contributions in these fora. For example, with the United States hosting APEC this year, we look forward to Taiwan showcasing its contributions in key areas, including health and the economy, women's economic empowerment, the digital economy, and more. And we look forward to continuing to work together this year and beyond to advance sustainable and inclusive economic growth in the APEC region. The ties between our people only continue to grow as well. I had the privilege of spending time with the Taiwanese diaspora community along with President Tsai in New York and Los Angeles, and I was so impressed with the energy, talent, and the care that this community brings to the United States, and which I know our American community in Taiwan brings here as well. One key focus for us is connecting more Americans with Mandarin language instruction and educational exchanges with Taiwan through our joint education initiative launched in 2020. Through robust people-to-people -people and academic exchanges such as the Fulbright, Fulbright program, we are working together to leverage Taiwan's expertise in STEM fields and language instruction while helping Taiwan reach its own goals to become a bilingual society by 2030. And of course, the United States is working closely with Taiwan 
to uphold peace and stability in the Taiwan Strait that is necessary not only for Taiwan's security and prosperity, but for the regions and worlds as well. This is the central and driving tenet of the United States cross-strait policy. Our unofficial relationship, which has gradually expanded over the years, continues to flourish under our One China policy, which is guided by the Taiwan Relations Act, the three U.S.-China joint communiques, and the six assurances. Unfortunately, the PRC's recent military exercises in, in August and just last week undermined peace and stability across the strait. As my colleagues in the U.S. government have said, there was no reason for Beijing to turn President Tsai's transit, which was consistent with long-standing U.S. policy, into something it was not, or to use it as a pretext to overreact. And let me be clear, the United States will continue to uphold our commitments to support Taiwan's self-defense capacity as a key means to ensuring that the Taiwan Strait remains peaceful and stable. And we welcome the steps that President Tsai has been taking to strengthen Taiwan's capacity as well. But for our purposes this evening, it is the U.S.-Taiwan economic and commercial relationship which serves as a core pillar of our overall partnership and is also an essential part of enhancing Taiwan's resilience. And that is perhaps what is most relevant and perhaps of most interest to you. So let me start by highlighting some of the recent developments we've seen in this area, beginning with trade. As we've already heard, in January, USTR held the first round of negotiations under the US-Taiwan Initiative on 21st Century Trade, which takes place under the auspices of AIT and our counterpart organization, TECRO. This initiative is designed to address a range of trade and investment issues that are critical to our two economies. Our goal is a high ambition trade agreement and we have seen impressive progress already. Our first round of negotiations focused on potential early harvest chapters of good regulatory practices, services, domestic regulation, trade facilitation, anti-corruption, and small and medium sized enterprises. Future negotiations will build on this by addressing such critical issues as digital trade, labor, the environment, and of course, the thorny issue of agricultural trade. While the negotiations under this initiative move forward, we are continuing our work under the U.S.-Taiwan Trade and Investment Framework Agreement, or TIFA. U.S. Trade Representative Catherine Tai and Minister John Dung reviewed progress under the TIFA last year, and the subject matter experts in both the United States and Taiwan continue to regularly address outstanding trade issues of mutual concern. These include issues AmCham Taiwan has raised, such as regulatory transparency, financial services, and investment. Late last year, the United States and Taiwan met again under the auspices of AIT and TECRO for a high-level meeting of the State Department-led Economic Prosperity Partnership Dialogue to discuss some of the broader issues of concern facing our two economies. Our conversations regarding responses to economic coercion, cooperation on supply chain resilience, and Taiwan's energy transformation have continued since then with a focus on how we can work together to prevent major disruptions to our shared economic growth. Through this dialogue, we have identified many areas for cooperation, including information sharing and mutual understanding, and we look forward to continuing this important conversation over the course of this year and beyond. One of the more exciting recent developments in our economic cooperation has been the creation of the Technology Trade and Investment Collaboration Framework, or TTIC. Whereas the EPPD has a high-level macro focus, a distinct goal of the TTIC is to facilitate deals between U.S. and Taiwan companies, particularly in the semiconductor, 5G, electric vehicle, sustainable energy, and cybersecurity sectors. Last October, Minister Wong met, uh, led an impressive delegation of over 40 companies to the United States, where Minister Wong and U.S. Department of Commerce officials witnessed multiple signing ceremonies at our offices at AIT to celebrate commercial partnerships between U.S. and Taiwan companies. It is these types of partnerships that bring our two economies closer in such sectors as clean energy and the digital economy. Mr. Wong and her delegation met with uh, Secretary of Commerce Raimondo, where both sides stressed the importance of facilitating trade and investment between the United States and Taiwan, and discussed how best to smooth the way for this investment. 
These conversations have allowed us to better understand the needs of our respective communities. This is an area where AmCham plays such a critical role. Your annual white paper is an essential tool for policymakers in Washington and Taipei alike. The white paper, together with your sustained interaction with AIT, the US government, and our Taiwan partners over the course of the year, point us towards short, both short-term concrete objectives and longer-term aspirational goals. We welcome this input and feedback, and we thank AmCham for being such a strong partner of AIT, of the US government, and of our Taiwan hosts. The stock of U.S. foreign direct investment in Taiwan exceeds $30 billion, which demonstrates just how much the United States and Taiwan value U.S. investment here in Taiwan. Every one of you here tonight is an embodiment of those strong investment ties. All of us understand that Taiwan is a reliable and trusted place for companies to invest and do business. Of course, investment flows both ways, and we similarly welcome Taiwan's investments in the United States. TSMC's $40 billion planned investment in Arizona and Global Wafer's $5 billion planned investment in Texas are just the most visible examples of how our economies are becoming more closely integrated and how we rely on each other's expertise. The Chips and Science Act, which President Biden signed into law last year, is making it even more attractive for cutting edge companies from Taiwan, as well as their suppliers, to invest in the United States, binding our two economies even closer together and bringing mutual benefit to the United States and Taiwan. Let me emphasize this point. Our attracting Taiwan investment to the United States does not come at the expense of Taiwan, just as our supporting US investment in Taiwan does not come at the expense of the United States. We understand that doing business overseas can be challenging as investors face new rules and regulations and different customs, and we stand ready to assist Taiwan's businesses in addressing any challenges they may face. At the same time, of course, Taiwan companies understand the benefit of diversification and and of course, manufacturing their products closer to the customer base. The United States is an attractive investment destination and so is Taiwan. We can and should continue to cooperate on efforts to strengthen our respective semiconductor industries. In fact, this is one of the main objectives of next month's Select USA Summit. Taiwan has long been a strong supporter of Select USA, sending the largest delegation of business representatives from anywhere in the world. I am sure that several of you in this room have participated in the past. I'm quite sure of that. And perhaps some of you plan to join uh, for the first time um, next month in May. Select USA is the highest profile event in the United States dedicated to promoting foreign direct investment. And Taiwan's impressive delegations have led to concrete deals that benefited both of our economies. It is thanks to this increased Taiwan investment in the United States that we better understand the tax challenges facing Taiwan companies in the United States and U.S. companies here in Taiwan. President Tsai, AmCham, and the Taiwan business community have made very clear their interest in addressing those challenges. As the U.S. Secretary of the Treasury, Janet Yellen, told Congress twice last month, we recognize that there is a problem and we are looking at potential ways to address it. We also welcome AmCham's continued engagement on this topic. So as you can tell, there is so much happening in the U.S.-Taiwan economic and commercial relationship, as well as in our broader partnership. So let me just close once again by saying what an honor it is to serve as the new chair of the American Institute in Taiwan, standing here tonight with President Tsai, with Director Odekirk, with, with Chair Schur, and with all of you here, I see the enormous potential of the U.S.-Taiwan partnership. My number one objective as the chair of AIT is to help us all tap that potential, to bring our economies even closer together, and to ensure the U.S.-Taiwan partnership continues to thrive. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chairperson Rosenberger. Please return to your seat.